So your teacher told me you guys are supposed to have a test today. And she said it was after Thanksgiving, but that's a lie. So everybody pull out some paper and Yeah, okay. Sorry. Sorry. All right, you get candy because of your shirt. Yeah. Or blue. Oh, oh, she lost it. Oh, wait, I got this. I got a gator. That's a game yeah. that shirt. Okay, hello. Somebody told me I was wearing Alright, so I have, I have candy. I have candy, so get ready for it. But basically, I'm Shelly Concepcion, like a teacher said. Um, I'm a gator, a business owner, and an entrepreneur. Does anybody want to take a stab at what they think entrepreneurship means? Anybody? Okay, well, you have your own business. Own business? Anybody else? Oh, wait. Like, like you, you go around and you tell everyone, like, your story. Like, yeah, that's part of it. Yeah. You're like your own boss. Like, own boss? Oh. But, but I don't have anything to do with you. Go ahead. No, I'm good. Those are all right. Those are all good answers. Here you go, man. Um, yeah. Those are all good answers. But basically what an entrepreneur is, is a risk taker, somebody that takes risks. Because if you come up with a new idea, you don't know if something's gonna be successful or not. So basically, you know, it's taking a, a big risk. Does anybody here, uh, parents own their own business? And how do they feel about it? Do they stress often? Or, yeah, do they stress a lot? And when, what time do they have off? economy? When are they off? Sunday. Sunday? <laughs> Never, right? Business is life. So I had an intro, but YouTube doesn't work at school, so I can't show it to you guys. I wanted to help but, uh, oh, uh, oh, I can do it. But like I said, there's a sign in sheet coming around, so just sign in. And like I said, I introduced myself. I went to the University of Florida, I majored in criminology, and then I went back and got my master's in entrepreneurship. Uh, so I also played football while I was there. Did you walk on? Yeah, I walked on to the team. So uh, one of the quotes I have on here, from failure comes success. And uh, you'll see why that's there. But basically, like you said, I walked on. I tried out for the team one time. And, you know, I didn't make it. So I just continued to work hard. And then the following year, I made the team. And that ended up being the year uh, that we made the national championship. So like I said, from, from failure comes success. So I didn't make the team the first time, but you know I, I continued to work hard and I went out the following year and I made not only made the team, but I was one of the top uh, new people to join the team. And we ended up winning the national championship that year. So that was huge. And like I said, uh, I had another video here, but Matt, anybody been to the swamp in Gainesville? Yeah. You know how many people who can fit in there? 96,000. So imagine 96,000 people screaming, you know, when we got back from winning the championship. You know, everybody was excited. Everybody was there screaming, yelling. It's nice to know that that many people support you in something. You know, so it's something that you can strive for. You know, always keep your eyes on the prize or whatever you want to do. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do it. So like I said, from failure comes success. Why did I say that? Well, the year we won the national championship, we didn't. We we lost the game, and we thought we weren't going to go to the national championship. Well, the day after that game on Monday, we have a team meeting. But we lost the game. We had a team meeting. Coach looked at us, said the season's not over, and he handed us a card. And I actually still have the card in my wallet. The card has what Danny Werfel said on it after they lost to FSU in '96. Anybody know who Danny Werfel is? That before you guys time. Anybody know who Tim Tebow is? Yeah. Danny Werfel was Tim Tebow before Tim Tebow was Tim Tebow. And he won the national championship in 96. Well, here's a quote that, that we were given after we lost the game. It says, I remember talking to some of the media. I remember being not so just physically exhausted, but emotionally exhausted. So, you know, you put a lot into it. Anybody play sports in here? So, you know what it's like. You know, you go to practice every day. You put everything into it pour so much into something that had been so much pressure and then it all sort of evaporated. 
the thing to me that was really impressive about this team is that after the game, there was so much negativity coming from a lot of different directions. But the senior leadership, I remember that Monday and Tuesday, a huge rallying of morale to get ready for what was to come and what was a chance to win the SEC championship. So the seniors, the leaders step up and they get everybody going and motivated to continue after they lost the game. So it would seem crazy to anybody on the outside to think you might not get up for a chance to win the SEC championship when you've been gearing up for so long for the national championship all year. There was a lot of negativity around in the days after the FSU game. To see those senior leaders change that, to reorient that back was special. That was the key for us as, that, as to what would happen. This is one of the things I'm most proud of. It is one thing to be successful, but to have been knocked down and get up is a pretty special thing. So does anybody know how the Florida Gators ended the 1996 season after that quote? They won national championship. They won national championship that year. And they did it because they didn't beat themselves up, or the seniors didn't allow the team to beat themselves up after losing to FSU. Anybody know who they beat in the national championship in 96? What team? USF? FSU. So they got revenge on FSU in the national championship game and ended up blowing them out 52 to, 10, uh, 52 to 20. And the reason I share that story, if you guys have followed the Gators recently, Tim Tebow made a similar promise in 2008. And what was the results of that that year for the Gators? Anybody know? National championship. National championship. So it's not about how many times you can win. It's about how you respond when you lose and get up the next game. You can't allow a loss to continue to let you lose. Because you can lose one game, but when you continue to lose games because you're still thinking about the game that you lost, that you can win, that's what you don't want to let happen. And that's on and off the field. And life, too. If you get hit in the face, you know, that's what we used to call it, hit in the mouth by something. You know, it's how you respond to it is what defines who you are and what kind of character you have. It's never how you do when things are good. So it's always keep your head up, you know, and continue to work hard. So being on the football team opened up new opportunities uh, for me, for myself personally, and the team we flew up. I remember we had practice in the morning. We flew up to Washington, D.C. after practice, flew back to Washington, flew back to Gainesville that same day on a charter plane. We got to meet the president, President Bush, um, at the time, and uh, got to hang out in the White House and get a tour of the White House, places that uh, people don't get to see. So, you know, it just goes to show that hard work. You know, if I would have gave up when I, made, when I tried out for the team and didn't make it the first time, I wouldn't have been able to do any of those things. So, you know, it just goes to show you that if you work hard, you'll eventually get paid back what you put into something. But it doesn't always necessarily come right away. So, but I also did school when I was at, at Florida. And I start with football because for the rest of my life, if something happens, if I get in trouble, if I die, it'll say former Florida football player, Telly Concepcion. So, you know, that's something that I share because not only does it get attention, it's something that I worked hard for. But it's something that, you know, stays with you the rest of your life. That's how people will identify you. So, but like I said, I did school. I majored in criminology. I know you said you wanted to do criminology. And I had a great time while I was at Florida. And I learned a lot while I was there and took advantage of the opportunity to, to advance in school. And I had a video here to show you guys also. Uh, but, again, YouTube doesn't work at school. But, again, from failure comes success. So while I was at the university, I worked on a project at UF Bio Diesel. Anybody want to take a crack at what Bio Diesel is? Anybody know? What? Bio Diesel? Like the gas? Similar to gas? Like diesel that won't hurt the environment like regular diesel will? Yeah. Basically, environmentally friendly diesel. And, and we used to make it from cooking oil. We used the old cooking oil on campus and made the Bio Diesel for the university. So. What came from that project was a lot of learning about how bureaucracy works at the university level and also how to bring a team together from different aspects. I worked with a couple engineers, I worked with a, with a chemist. side of that project, a lot into that. And what ended up happening was when we put together the proposal and went to the university, uh, they said, no, you know, it sounds like a great idea, but no. Well, it's going to pay for itself 
in 15 months. You know? and, and it's also going to bring $30,000 worth of revenue back to the university so we can keep teachers that they were cutting at that time. And they said no because they, they wouldn't know where to put it or where to house it. So that was a failure. But it also opened new opportunities. At the time when I was working on the project, I met with Governor Chris and also Agriculture Commissioner Charles Bronson. You guys know who that is? Um, if you pump gas, you know, if you look on the little, on the side of it, inspected by Charles Bronson, that's his job as Agriculture Commissioner, is to protect the consumers of Florida. So this is at a Farm to Fuel Summit, you know, and I met with them and spoke to them about the project we were doing biodiesel. And even though it was a failure, they still wanted to hear what I had to say about it so we can improve. And if anybody doesn't know, I didn't know, Charlie Chris played quarterback at St. Pete, at St. Pete High, and he played football at FSU. So. And then eventually, you know, I graduated from the University of Florida. It wasn't easy, you know, it took a lot of hard work. And there was a lot of distractions, but I was able to do it. And the reason was because you have to have a why, you know. That's something that's very important. Um, a lot of successful people talk about a why. Um, and basically what a why is is the reason why you do things. What's your motivation? Um, sometimes you don't want to be in class. You know, sometimes you don't want to get up in the morning. Sometimes you don't want to practice. But you have to keep thinking about your why because that will be the reason that drives you and that will be what motivates you and keeps you going when things get rough. So my why is my family, and you guys might recognize my mom. She works across the hall, so, and that's my sister. She goes to USF now. So, Does anybody here have why? Have a why? Anybody? So I can go to UF. UF? Yeah. Anybody else have a why? Because I want to be a successful adult. Successful adult. That's important. Anybody else? What's your why? Go to college, cheers. Same, UF. UF? Play football. Play football? Play football? What level? D1. Anybody else? So what you want to do, and um, a lot of successful entrepreneurs, uh, millionaires, you know, really successful people, they say, you know, keep your wife visible. You know, carry a picture of a football in your pocket. I don't want to go to class today, you know, pull that picture out, right? Like, you know, that's the only way I'm going to be able to get get my why. You know, and if you if it's to go to college, you know, remember that, you know, carry the picture of that in your wallet or your kid, you know, people that have kids or, you know, if you want to get that big house, put a picture of that big house you want in your pocket or that car that you want. You know, any of those things, just one that day you don't feel like going to class or anything, you know, you pull out your why and you know exactly why you're doing it. So out of failure comes success. So the biodiesel project failed. You know, they didn't pick it, the school didn't pick it up. I felt like I wasted a year working on that. You know, I put a lot of time and effort into it. And what ended up happening was uh, we used, uh, we started making soap. Why soap? Well, from the biodiesel reaction, um, one of the byproducts is glycerin, and glycerin is the basis for soap. And so we started making it just to, just to spread the word about biodiesel, because it's a negative perception, you know, it's dirty, uh, it's fuel, you know. So we started making soap out of the glycerin. But we went around to all the biodiesel facilities, as many as we could in the southeast, and we found out they weren't doing anything with their glycerin. You know, they didn't have a plan, so they were just saving it. So what we started doing was creating glycerin soap made out of that so we can promote our project throughout the university. Well, a lot of the professors said, well, hey guys, this is something we've never seen before. Uh, we've never seen a collegiate licensed soap product. You guys should try to do that. So when the project failed, I started Gita Gliss, which I'm the founder and CEO of.